Welcome to my beginning watercolor tip 18, moisture content part one, why you must know. No matter what medium you choose to work in, whether it's oil, acrylic, pastel, sculpture, there are certain technical aspects about the uh, particular medium that you need to have an understanding of and eventually master if you're going to be successful with that medium. Watercolor is no different. If you don't take the time, especially when starting out with a medium, to learn a little bit about the equipment, the materials, and the application of watercolor, you can get frustrated to the point where you just want to give it up and try something else. I work with transparent watercolors, and as I've put my beginning watercolor tips together, I've tried to cover uh, concepts that I feel are important for somebody starting out with watercolor to have a good understanding of if they're going to be successful painting in watercolor. Some of those have been technical in nature, talking about materials, equipment, or application of watercolor, and others have dealt with design principles. This beginning watercolor tip is the start of a series that I'm going to do that deal with moisture content. Moisture content is everything when working with watercolor. You have to know the condition of your paper and the condition of your brush. You have to know the moisture content in each of those because applying brush to paper is going to do something different depending on what the moisture level is in your brush and the moisture level in your paper. And it's not just with uh, painting with a brush. You, you, there's certain techniques that you can use in watercolor, such as scraping, that require you to have a good understanding of the moisture content in your paper in order to be effective using that technique. As I've been speaking, I've been putting down a gradated wash of color on the small sheet of paper. And it's surprising sometimes how many people are out there trying to do paintings and they're getting frustrated because they're not getting the result they're after. And when you look at the painting, it's obvious that they haven't taken the time to learn this basic fundamental of how to put down a uh, even wash. And uh, moisture content plays a big part in uh, being effective in using this skill. Here I'm doing a painting that makes use of the white of the paper. It has gradation of color and value. There's hard edges, soft edges, lost and found edges. And uh, being able to execute with all those elements requires you to have a good understanding of the moisture content. There are parts of this painting that have been done working on wet paper. There's parts of this painting that are done working on dry paper. I cannot get the nice, hard, crisp edges of some of those shapes, especially some of those smaller shapes, working on wet paper because the paint will diffuse and it will soften the edge. I, if I'm after that type of a result, I have to be working on dry paper. If it's a softer edge that I'm after, a soft shape, I'm going to accomplish that by working on wet paper. This is a clip from an earlier beginning watercolor tip where I talk about leading a bead of water down your page and painting with gravity. It's important to have a good understanding of the moisture content in your brush and your paper in order to uh, accomplish this. I'm working with a fully loaded brush on dry paper so that I can lead this bead around these shapes. Also, I know my paper is saturated where I've put the paint and I know that if I bring a loaded brush of another color and put it in there to charge that shape of color that I'm going to get a nice gradation of that color because the paper is very moist, it's saturated, and it will allow that color to diffuse within the shape that I've already put down. That wouldn't be the case if this was just a somewhat damp 
it, it might start to create some edges and I couldn't do that on dry paper. It would just be a glaze. Uh, and also knowing the moisture content of my brush, uh, I'm bringing a fully loaded brush to the page so that I can lead this bead of water. If my pick, my brush was just damp and I was bringing it down the page, I wouldn't get this saturated paper and I'd start getting texture because it wouldn't cover uh, completely as I've accomplished here using a fully loaded brush on dry paper. It's also knowing uh, what's going to happen when I start leading this bead of water very close to the brush marks I've already made. Uh, I, I know that because I have dry paper in between the brush marks that I'm not going to get any interaction of the, the various brush marks because the dry paper will resist the flow of paint. So you can see how very close I got there and those edges aren't going to mingle because the dry paper is going to resist that. Having that knowledge allows me to make my brush marks with confidence. In this example from one of my videos, I'm painting the uh, shadowed side of this uh, barn structure and I'm applying a wash that's uh, very much like the uh, little wash that I was applying as I introduced this video. And I'm just bringing down a, a nice wash with variation of color. And it's... Uh, going to go where I want it to go because I'm going to control where the moisture is in my paper. I'm not soaking the whole page. I'm just painting with a very uh, saturated brush. You can see as I make a brush stroke that there's a bead of water that is, is there. So my brush is fully loaded and I'm painting on dry paper. And by doing that I know that I can get a nice gradation of color. I can get a consistent wash and it's going to go where I want because I'm going to control where the moisture is in the paper. And on the edge, it's going to give me a hard edge, but it's a large shape and within it, I'm going to get a lot of a nice soft gradation. I also know that there's limitations on what I can accomplish in, in this space with the paper being as wet it is, as it is at the, at the moment the uh, this wash has saturated this paper and you can see on my sketch there's some detail on the side of this building that I'm going to going to paint uh, on that surface however in order to do that I'm going to need to dry my paper unless there's an area where I want some soft edges and don't need a lot of definition which on this uh, structure that's probably not the case I was painting uh, in a landscape where some trees in the background or mountains, I might want the soft edge within this wash. But in this particular instance, I'm going to detail some of the, the cracks and the crevices and the doors and windows on this building. And in order to do that detail work, I'm going to need to fully dry this paper and then start painting wet on dry. So here again, knowing what you can and can't do depending on the moisture content of your paper is very important. I've seen uh, examples where somebody has put down a wash such as this on, on something like a building and then they've come back in and tried to do some of the detail work without drying the paper and it, it just doesn't work. They get a lot of soft edges, a lot of bleeding of uh, colors into one another and gives an undesirable result. Here you have a variety of brush marks um, and uh, you can see where a few of the brush marks give a nice solid coverage with the paint and some of the others have a, a more textural quality to it. That's all achieved by varying the uh, moisture content in the brush or the paper, but in this case this is all on dry paper, so controlling the moisture content of the brush enables you to accomplish different results um, depending on how you've loaded your brush. This beginning tip series is about moisture content and I titled part one, Why You Need to Know. 
you need look no farther than this list to see why it's important that you have a good understanding about moisture content. If you're going to control the white and light in your paintings, you have to have a good understanding of moisture content and know how to control your paint. Same thing with edges. In order to create hard edges, soft edges, lost edges, broken edges. Moisture content plays a part in achieving gradation in your paintings, creating textures, achieving value contrast. And it's also very important that you understand what you can and can't do if you're going to keep your colors fresh and lively in your paintings. This first video is intended to be an overview discussing the important role that moisture content plays when working with watercolor and how important it is that you have a good understanding of the concept of controlling moisture when you're working in watercolor so you can be successful and avoid frustration. Parts two through five in this series will use exercises to illustrate the cause and effect of different moisture conditions in your brush and your paper. In part two, I'll use an exercise to illustrate what happens when working on saturated paper with a saturated brush, a damp brush, and a low moisture brush. In part three, I'll use an exercise to illustrate what happens when working on damp paper using a saturated brush, a damp brush, and a low moisture brush. Part four, we'll use an exercise to illustrate what happens when working on dry paper, again with a saturated brush, a damp brush, and a low moisture brush. In part five, I'll use an exercise to illustrate scraping and lifting under different moisture conditions. I hope in this short video I've been able to get across the important role that moisture content plays when working with watercolor and that you have a good understanding of why I've titled this moisture content part one, why you must know. Be sure to check out Rick Sirwitz Watercolor Friends and Subscribers on Facebook. And if you have questions about my materials, you can go to the studio page of my website, rsirwitzart.com. If you have specific questions, you can email me at contactrsirwitzart at gmail.com. Thanks for watching.